परदे कमरूपिणी विद्यारंभम करिष्यामी सिद्धिर्भवत मे सदा I am presenting a new light on Bharatiya civilization, primarily from indescript inscriptions. We have now about more than 9,000 inscriptions that are made available to us in five volumes of photographic corpus. The presentation will be made in four parts, organizational history, Vedic traditions continuum, social cultural history, art history, and trade and economic history. On the right side is the map which shows the locus of our study, which includes Meduha, Magan, Dilmun, and the generally referred to as the Saraswati Sindhu Bharati Civilization area, the Indo Iranian borderlands, and ancient Mesopotamia and Sumer. At the bottom of the screen, you'll see a picture of a Mohenjo or a priest. We will demonstrate that this priest is a refuge, a potru, a purifier priest of the Rigvedic tradition. The seals are remarkable because they are purely organized by graphemes. For example, on this seal of M1225, we see a swastika on one side. On the reverse of the seal, we got a bull looking down or the feeding trough, and some signs on top of the seal. We'll now take a look at some of the readings of the seal, or similar seal. In Harappa 1999, the bull is Bharat Balad, ox. The rebus reading, or similar sounding word, which signifies Baran, Bharat, mixed alloy, by copper, four zinc, one tin. So we read the graphemes similarly by similar sounding words. For example, for sign 178 signifies a taki, an adds a spade or an axe. The similar sounding word is takashala. Then at the bottom we'll see sign 176, which is a karikom, karado in Gujarati. The similar sounding word is karade, daybook, wealth accounting ledger, or karadi, turner, Gujarati. Canada hard metal alloy in Marathi. So like this, you will be able to see using the Desi Basha or the Kill language, words which can signify the graphemes and corresponding similar sounding homonyms or similar sounding words. For example, the trough in front of the bull is a feeling trough. It's called Patar. The rebus reading is Patar, golden goldsmith guild. So now we can see the goldsmith guild Working with swastika. What is swastika? Swastika, swasti is well being. It's also a sign for blessing. The similar sounding word is chasta, zinc in Hindi, or sattva, zinc in Kannada, or tau in zinc computer in Uriya. So, like this, we can read the grapheme of uh, that drama sign, which is karach, corner. Showing four corners. Rebus Kanchu, bell metal. So he's a bell metal worker. It belongs to a goldsmith guild. Working also with Bharat mixed alloy and with zinc computer or zinc. So this is how we go on reading the indescript graphemes. For example, the five linear strokes is Tata, five, a slang term. The similar sounding word is Tatan, a goldsmith, or a Tata brass. Tatakara, brass worker. So this whole the reading of the entire script goes on recording the wealth accounting ledgers of alloy metal workers. Now we can take a look at the Mohenjadara priest and also another priest which is shown in, which was found in uh, as a figure in, in Mundigak, a neighboring civilization, neighboring area, along with the same civilizational structure, cultural structure. In one case, one uh, he's wearing a fillet with a round bead on the forehead and also also on the right hand of this priest who is also wearing a trefoil. We don't read all these pictures and the graphemes to signify meanings related to the life activities of the people of the civilization. 
no we found a remarkable <coughs> artifact called a bacteria silver vase this is now kept in miho museum in japan which shows in two registers on the top register eight registers are shown the participating eight priests of the rigveda and at the bottom is a farmer at work with a plow and a bullocks so the farmer the top register shows the uh, priest wearing a trefoil possibly a trefoil shawl and also is working with perforated jars which is very very unique, unique. and at the bottom of the perforated jars you find a basket containing ingots so there is some work is going on related to metal work so we have the eight trees that have been mentioned in the rigveda the brahman nestru otru advaryu agnid otru achavaka maitravarna otru is a focus of attention in mohenjadaro potti cloth the remember sounding word is potru purifying priest of the rigveda he is one of the eight priests of the vedic tradition now we can see the fillet is different in the case of mudika priest and a similar remarkably a, a bold fillet has been found which compares with the fillet worn on the forehead of the mudika priest similarly in the case of the mohenjadaro priest even archaeologically a gold disc has been found with the center piece at the center possibly it uh, had a, a possibly a precious metal within in, in case within a gold disc even uh, such a disc was being worn on the forehead of the priest and you see you can see on the right hand side some of the gold uh, fillets some are straight forward some are faced like the bodhiga uh, priest and some like the priest of mohenjadaro spotadara potru becomes the word potadara in uh, marathi language his job is to work with assaying of all men in paint to the treasury he was also a village silver smith is also he is called poddar in oriya he is a gold smith jeweler he is a money changer so he works with uh, the treasury input he wears the potti gold glass bead and that's why he is called potru now in nausharo we found a remarkable artifact which shows the inscription on a pot it shows a person carrying something on the two hands a comparable seal was found in ur on one side is a dotted circle on the other side a person carrying two bags of possibly a water and flanked by two stars something like polar stars so they are all gaia themes which signify very important information related to the seal that circular seal found in ur this has been recognized as a indescript seal though it was found outside of the ancient indus valley civilization area so is the wearing a pata a slab or a fillet and the similar sounding word is pata which is a metal manufacturing it's also called patada in telugu tarada patadai in tamil it is in a place where metal work is carried out so now surprisingly archaeologically we have found some but button seals made of gold such button seals might have been embroidered into the trefoil of the priest three foils trefoil or two foils or single foil which are all seen on the image of the priest so this gold foil has a remarkable vedic tradition which you will see very soon so triark is a clover trefoil in a kalsha language dardik the similar sounding word is rembaka or triarka three coppers so this is all the types of buttons that have been found archaeologically which compare which can be reconstructed to be part of the 
ஷால் ஆஃப் தி ஒய்தார் ஆஃப் பிரீஸ்ட் ஹவு கட் தி ட்ரெடிஷன் தட் கண்டினியூஸ் ஈவன் டுடே இன் கட்ச் ஏரியா தெர் ஆர் லேடிஸ் எம்ப்ராய்டரிங் இன் டு தி கிளாத் ஆர் ஷால்ஸ் ஆர் எனி அதர் கிளாத் தீஸ் பட்டன்ஸ் ஆஃப் வெரைட்டி ஆஃப் மெட்டீரியல் தே ஆர் எம்ப்ராய்டர்ட் இன் டு தி சிஸ்டம் தே ஆர் லைக் தி த்ரீ தாத்தூஸ் த்ரீ காப்பர் கோல்ட் சில்வர் பேபி பெட்டல்ஸ் ஆர் பார்ட் ஆஃப் தி என்டையர் ட்ரிஃபாயில் சிம்பா திரிதாத்து சர்ப்ரைசிங்லி இட்ஸ் ஆல்சோ தி நேம் ஆஃப் கணேஷா அக்கார்டிங் தி ரிகார்ட் சேஷா இன் சப்தா கால்ப திரோவா அண்ட் ஆல்சோ இன் அமரா கோஷா ஹவு கம் இஸ் கால் திரிதாத்து வாஸ் இ ஒர்க்கிங் வித் த்ரீ மெட்டல்ஸ் ஹூ நோஸ் சோ நவ வி சீ தி டெக்ஸ்ட்யூல் மெட்டீரியல் இஸ் அவேலபிள் ஃபாலோயிங் தி ரிக்வைடிக் ட்ரெடிஷன் இஸ் அ நோச் லேட்டர் டேட் இன் அ சதப்பத பிராமணா maybe 100 or 200 years later than the rigveda where there is a remarkable investiture ceremony of the potru being described i have given the references to the rigvedic sukta and also the references to the tatapada brahmana where the traidatavi ishti tri dhatu investiture ceremony is a remarkable detailed description is made available how the successful priest the potru together with other seven priests after performing the yagna he is celebrated is venerated with this tri dhatu tri dhatu vi isti the three distar metal may be copper silver and gold they create a trefoil these metals fused together and embroidered and sewed into the garment as a kach embroidery tradition so the circular end band or the fillet also contains a inlay or the ornament on the forehead the small ornament which is a dot in circle like an eye bead possibly made of gold with stateite inlay in the center the object of the yagna has been achieved and therefore the investiture ceremony begins it was the prayers prescribed for having attained the desired objective. Traidatavi Ishti provides for attainment of three menorahs, copper, silver, gold, through the Yagna. Investiture of Potru is described in detail in the Rigveda Sukta. Sa satam pariniyate hota pandro divishtu uta pota nishirati says Rigveda in 4.9.3. And as we have seen, Traidatavi Ishti is detailed in the satapada brahmana this is a more detailed presentation of how the investiture of the how the spinning embroidery process takes place for the three metals constitutory three discs see trita tv is the final is the final offering vadosaniya mystic import is ends with the presentation of gold coins such gold coins are either tied as gold bead fillets on the forehead and right shoulder of the priest or stitched on as embroidered ornaments on the robe of the priest the details are given in the sarapada brahmana reference indicated now the 10th brahmana further details how the yagna is performed on, the, on behalf of the person who does the performance of the yagna but the priest is doing it on his behalf so the, they prepare the investiture instruments by means of needles the needles are of three different metals needles used the copper ones silver ones gold ones that's what the satapada brahmana says so it is stitched in or possibly embroidered so there's a question of dispute whether it's stitched in or embroidered no no the fourth brahmana in the satapada brahmana takes this further indicating the different types of metals that are used for the object metals that are used for the yagna for example an iron bowl is used and all is used for offering an oblation to rudra why the iron the satapada brahmana explains 
why iron is used to propitiate or venerate Rudra. So we, as we have seen, Raila Tevi Ishti is the final offering, Vodavasaniya, with the presentation of gold coins. And the fifth Brahmana further details the divinities were invoked in the process of this uh, Rajasuya Yagna. Udavasaniya Ishti. Completion of operation for the performer of Rajasuya. The fifth Brahmana details the Rajasuya detail per procedure. How the three gold pieces of 100 manas each or sacrificial fee for the Brahman and also the Advaryu, the Udgatru and the Otru. According to Narsayana, these are Satamanas, which are similar to the round plate worn by the king during the consecration ceremony. So there is another uh, seal which shows uh, three faces. It could be three seras. Three hundred son of Tosta, grandson of Prahlada, according to Brahmana Purana. Vastram, it means copper. And surprisingly, a similar sounding word, Tuisto or Tuisko, is, is described as the founder of the Germanic people. So there was a lot of travel among the, of the people from Meluha or the Bharati civilization area into these. Germanic regions where this Tuisto, Tuisco tradition has evolved. And of course, the three faces that are shown on the face of Tvashta, Trishiras. And there are also other features related to this particular remarkable so called Pajapati seal, where the horns are that of a buffalo and his face almost looks like that of a tiger, a cool tiger. Civil sounding word, coal, a machine, or a contrivance, coal hay, iron smelters, the coals. And surprisingly, the tatara, which is the buffalo horn, is called tatara, in, and it signifies a Japanese iron smelter. His first star is the main architect, Mohenjo Daro seal M304. Qatar. Pras, Tvashta. So the, the Vedic tradition which venerates the Tvashta, who is also a Rigvedic priest, one of the nine priests, and the, he is attributed with a lot of divine attributes. Tvashta being propitious, you are the diffusive in kindness. Come to you, Varuna God, protect us in repeated performance of the Yagna. So, this is the request made in the Rigveda by the performers of the Yagna. On this tune, Grass, Anaspati, be seated, Agnishtoma, which is formed by Tvashtara as, as a divine architect, like Vishwakarma, made of wood. And also tuned with Varis Garba in keeping with the divinities in Arigdhistoma rituals of processes of Yagna. Well shaped as if by a carpenter, Pashta. Tatan is called in Tamil, is a goldsmith. Or Tachan, Tuisko, is a carpenter. So the First image surprisingly finds its uh, replica in a separate cylinder seal of Mesopotamia. Three faced artisan on a neo Assyrian cylinder seal of the 8th century before Common Era. And maybe associated with the Tuisco, Tuiskan, Tuisto, the German founder, founder of the Germanic people. So look at this scene on the cylinder scene, which contains a number of graphemes 
which can be explained in terms of the Indus script tradition of reading it as similar sounding words of Desi Prakrit or Desi Ramamala, Desi Basha, the linked language, language of the guild of workers and artisans and seafaring merchants. This is the buffalo horn, Tatar. Tatar are goldsmiths. And as we see, Tatara is a furnace. In the Japanese furnace. Tatera is buffalo horns. Tatera is a brass worker in the Indo Aryan words. As you can see from the reference to C dial 5473. So the tuft that the Ashpati seal wears is a kunda, Agni kunda. So this the words are being used to signify very important components of the process of performing a yagna in the yagni kunda. There are also a bunch of twigs on the horns. Kuti are twigs in the Atharvayada. Kuti means a melting furnace. Kunda, kunda, furnace. A fire, fire altar, fire. process in performance of Yagna, the sacred fire. Tatar is a brass worker. Kunda is a fire pit. So now we see a bronze chariot of Daimabad and we also have the bronze images of figurines of animals, elephant, buffalo, rhinoceros or Bore being drawn on wheels to celebrate the festival of the Pota festival, Pola annual festivity, where wheel toys are used to by celebrating and making the children aware of the tradition of the Pola. Pola, of course, is a zebu. Pola also means a magnetite war. He also is called Kunt. Is a book. Kunt means a community, a guild. So here is a two-wheel chariot with some other graphemes that I can be described in detail, including the birds called Poladu, Black Drango, which is Polad, steel. Two birds, Dula, two, similar sounding word, Dul, metal casting. So metal casting of steel was going on. And that's what this man's trade was the chariot here. So we have a very beautiful seal from Daimabad which shows only just this symbol which is the most frequent symbol in the entire corpora of Indus script. Daimabad seal number one which shows the rim of a jar. Karana, rim of a jar. Karana, a scribe, a messenger, an accountant. Dispatch. So some kind of a great dispatch activity going on and this symbol becomes very important in describing the details on the seals and tablets of the Indoscript Karpara. So this is a typical photograph of the Pola festival held mostly in Marathi Konkani regions where the children celebrate the procession of these animals <laughs> which are incredibly linked to the life activities of the people. You can see some of the words that can relate to these pictures. Or graphemes. So this is the grapheme of the great Zebu. Poli is a dewlap. Pola is a Zebu. Pola is magnetic for night war. Kunt Kunt is Brahmani bull or Zebu in Kathiawar. Kuntro, entire bull used for beating. Kunt is a community or a guild. So this signifies the guild of the artisans and seafaring merchants. This becomes the symbol celebrated in the calligraphic version of the Constitution of India, drawn by Prabhagari Narayan Raista, eliminated by Nandalal Bose, which is held in the presidential palace in the Rajbhavan, Rashtrapati Bhavan. Agritite war, Kunt, community, Kunt, Zebu, Kuti, Warehouse, factory, smelter. 
So this is how the pictures are very clear representations of the life activities of the people, especially the words of the Desi Bhasha or the guild language of the artisans in civilization. Here is an extraordinary seal impression which shows two a couple meeting and at the background are the five uh, ficus leaves. They signify Lova ficus, silver sounding low, copper metal. Melaka is a meeting. Melaka also means a com company. So copper company is signified by this seal impression. And it is further elaborated in the <laughs> famous seal of the Man of Unicorns in M296 seal. <laughs> on some of the pictures, in the triangle, the black triangle sits on top of the Zebu. Because so it's called the friend of the cattle. Bolada is steel in Marathi. And this word finds expression in all Indo-European languages called Bolada, steel. So that's how the Indian steel became so famous because of the capability of the artisans to make crucible steel is Bolada. Those are parts are signifiers of this activity that was going on in some parts of the civilization area. The, surprisingly, the tradition did not die off. It continues into the mint period where mint coins are produced, showing some symbols, which are also graphemes, which can be explained. For example, in this case, as Arakuta, as Baras Alai Worker Guild, six uh, spokes emanating from the dotted circle. <laughs> dotted circle is Kuti Smelter Prithi Circle. That is smelter profession. <laughs> this is smelter profession. Arakuta. Arikalkam found in Kela in Sicily. <laughs> this is archaeological counterpart of the Arakuta word. The Arakuta, the circle, becomes an important symbol in the Great Barhut Torla, which has got two fish fins fused together. <coughs> Aya fish, Aya alloy metal, Kambata fish fin, similar sounding word, Kambatam, Kambata, Kambita, <coughs> a coiner, a mint, a mint workers. The mint is signified by the mint Barhut Torla and also Sanchi Torla. The art and circle we have seen, speech deals, well done, profession. Putty <coughs> So we can see how, now we explain how the fish words are so important. Aya is fish, Aya is iron alloy metal. Ayas, Rigvedic term, which are first in alloy metal. <coughs> By adding some descriptors to each of the signs or modifiers, Additional meaning is derived as indicated in the case of these five fish symbols, which are called very unique signifiers added on to, modifiers added on to the symbol. We have got evidence for a pot containing a fish symbol traveling from Manuha into Susa. This is called a Susa pot kept in the Louvre Museum. And this is the amount of material that is contained in that pot. So they were all alloy metal parts. There are also some silver, uh, cylinder seals which describe the nature of the transaction that is taking place. <laughs> so this is the detail of what the pot contained. Incredible amount of detail was recorded with very simple graphemes. So if there is a significant evidence that we can reduce that the Vedic civilization and this Saraswati Sindhu civilization or the Bharatiya civilization seem to be coterminous. <laughs> One following the other. <laughs> These are described in detail in five photographic volumes 
Ana olsa gelin. Bir valim soru yapıyor ya. Bir de soru gibi ne? Bak altın biz. Hapın din. It power the din. Rounds revolution. Akkar tuğdi. It source of hapın din. Rooted through the ancient Meluha. Arjya civilization area. Merchants. The seafaring Meluha merchants. And their trading agents operating in the sites of Persian Gulf. Now we can understand how by one common era India was the richest nation in the world as detailed by Agus Madison. Now we can reconstruct the three millennia preceding this one common era. By now the basic civilization was the richest civilization of its kind in the whole world. Anivar, Skar.